Hello, this is Al Dayer with Mickey's Bait and Tackle in North Syracuse, New York. And today we're going to tie a steelhead pattern. This is one of my favorite patterns. It has its origins from the Northwest going back over 20 years ago, this fly. We at Mickey's did a little variation on it. Originally, the fly was called the Dean River Lantern. It was a fly that incorporates a very interesting material that I'm sure some of you children from the 50s will recognize immediately. Um, the fly was originated by a Dr. Arthur Cohen from San Francisco, but it was popularized by one of my suppliers over 20 years ago out of uh, Lewiston, Idaho. His name was Bob Wagner, and he made a series of these flies. What we did was we just put a little interesting twist on the pattern uh, by adding some crystal chenille as a sort of a thorax. But it looks like an oversized traditional wet fly is really what it looks like with a tail. Uh, this fly is used uh, in the Salmon River, which is about 50 miles north of us, during the fall run of Pacific Salmon and Steelhead. And there have been some successes with this pattern. So let's talk about the materials that go into this first of all. Well, the heart of the fly is a material which is called edge bright. And some of you folks might recognize this stuff. It, it's basically plastic. And I remember as a kid seeing inflatables, plastic inflatables that you'd normally associate with swimming pools that use this stuff. And the neat thing about it is when the light catches it, I don't know if the camera can quite catch this, but you'll see the edge of this just pop. It has a really, really interesting uh, neon effect, you might say. Uh, to it, but when we incorporate it, and it comes in a variety of colors, you know, I mean, there's chartreuses, there's blues, there's various shades of reds and pinks. Uh, when we incorporate that material into the body of the fly, it gives it that pop when the sun hits it or the light hits it. It reflects light, basically. It kind of reminds me of an LNS mirror lure, which is a plug that again was from the 1950s, a plastic plug that was used a lot and it had uh, basically clear plastic and internally there was a foil and then when the, f when the light uh, reflected from the foil it would, it would make that plastic just pop and glow. So anyways we're going to use that material for the body of the fly. Uh, you'll see that the tail is made from squirrel tail and we have squirrel in a variety of colors that we can use. I don't just tie this fly in one color combination. I like tying this fly in a lot of different colors. Let your imagination kind of run away with you, I guess. And then for the thorax, we're using a good old crystal chenille. Okay. And that comes in a variety of colors. And then, of course, the hackle. You're using a good quality saddle hackle in your choice of colors. So, now, as far as the hook is concerned, I like using the old style Eagle Claw 1197, which is a sprout bend hook. And it's a pretty good stout wire. Uh, I wouldn't call it a heavy wire, but it's sort of a medium wire hook. And this hook was designed for doing steelhead flies. It has a down eye. It comes in gold, nickel, or bronze finish. Or I'll use the, the trusty heavy wire uh, must add 7970, which is a limerick bend with a down eye. Now that's a heavy wire hook. Well, you don't see them like this anymore. But that is very aggressive as far as uh, dealing with a, a big fish like a salmon or a large steelhead. And you can bend the barbs down on your hooks too. Don't be afraid to do that, too, especially if you, ca if you practice catch and release. But let's begin by tying this pattern. This is a lot of fun to tie this pattern. It's easy to tie, and it does catch fish. So remove that one from the vise. We'll put, we'll put the, uh, the mustad hook in there, okay, and we'll start my thread. And I'm using a nice size, uh, like a flat wax thread. This is about a size A. It's pretty heavy duty. And I'll begin by covering the shank of that hook with thread. Okay, I'll get rid of my excess. Okay, the first material that we're going to put in is basically the, uh, the squirrel tail, and I'm going to use like a uh, chartreuse. And I want some pretty long fibers, so towards the tip of the tail are where the longest fibers are. And I want a substantial bunch, and we're going to just grab a bunch of those like that, and I'm going to cut that as close as I can to the bone. Okay, 
bringing that out like that. There's my potential tail, and we're going to tie that in. And that's tied rather long, actually. Okay, get that established. Okay, and then the next material is going to be the uh, the edge bright. It comes also. It's called laser wrap edge bright. And the thing about the edge bright is it, it comes like this st uh, bulk stock. You have to take a straight edge and a cutting block in order to get the desired shape. And what you do is you put the the edge bright on the cutting block, and then you take the straight edge, and you want to cut it at an angle. You know, that's a bit that's a bit exaggerated. But that's the idea, is to get sort of a tapered piece. You take a nice straight edge, sharp razor, and then you just cut. Okay? And what you end up with is something like this. All right? So you can do these ahead of time. All right? We'll put that away. So here's what we have. We have our edge bright. And notice how it's tapered at one end, and it gets fatter and fatter and fatter. Okay, I'm going to take the fine end and I'm going to tie that in. And that's going to be about halfway up the shank of the hook. Okay, we'll get that established. Okay, and now here's a really important piece that I failed to mention earlier mylar tinsel. All right, it's gold on one side, silver on the other. And we're going to need a piece of that, probably about two inches, three inches long. So what I'll do is I'll cut some of that. Because this edge bright will not reflect unless there's something underneath it that's shiny. And that's where the mylar tinsel comes in handy. And we want the silver side to protrude outward. So I'm going to tie this in next as if I were tying in a tinsel body. And I'm going to tie it in with the gold side facing the ceiling. The gold, fi gold side facing the uh, away from the hook. Okay. And this way, when we begin to wrap that, it's going to be the silver side that shows. And a lot of tires that use heavy uh, mylar, in this case, this is a size 10. It's pretty wide because I'm using about a size 2 hook. I can actually cut a taper right into that mylar like that. This way, it facilitates tying it in with the least amount of bulk. Okay, we'll tie that in like that. Get that established bring my thread forward okay, to just behind the eye a little bit. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to begin to wrap the actual mylar. Now you notice when I begin to wrap it's the gold that goes inward and the silver that faces outward. So we'll begin to wrap that one right in front of the other. And the only part of this hook that you have to wrap is the rear section of the body because that's where the uh, edge bright is going to uh, occur. So I can go about that far and that's enough. Right about there, about three quarters up the shank of the hook. Tie that off. Get that established, my tinsel. I no longer need that tinsel. We can get rid of the excess. Okay. Give it a little more security with the thread. Okay, now I can take my edge bright and begin to wrap that. And when I wrap this, I'm going to go not just one wrap right next to the other, but there's going to be a bit of overlap because you want that edge to protrude because that's the part that really fluoresces is the edge. But notice when we go over the silver tinsel, it's a lot better in terms of its reflective qualities than it would be if we were to go over a bronze uh, shank of the hook. But there it is, essentially. Wrap that, tie that in. Okay, it's a really easy and quick pattern. And I think this would be a great pattern for cloudy water. In this particular uh, one, I'm doing a, a chartreuse tail with a fluorescent orange body. And then I'm going to take some chartreuse crystal yarn, and we're going to use that for the thorax. And I'm going to strip some of the fuzz away, just like you would any good chenille. We'll establish that by the, uh, the inner core. Easier said than done. Here we are. Okay, and we're going to build a nice thorax 
of crystal chenille by wrapping one in front of the other. And you have to leave enough room for the, uh, the head and the hackle, that's all. Just don't crowd yourself on this one. Okay, there we go. Tie that off. And that kind of contrasts, I like this chartreuse because it contrasts with the, uh, the fluorescent orange uh, body, but yet it complements the tail. And then we're going to also contrast that again with some beautiful dyed hot orange saddle hackle. I'm going to take a nice wide webby example of this. There we go. Okay. I'm going to strip off some of the fuzz revealing the stem. And we're actually going to tie this in by the tip. See how I get those barbules to go and behave? We're going to tie this in by the tip, like this, with the curved side facing towards the ceiling. Like that, get that established. Okay, I can get rid of this, I don't need this. Okay, the tip. And I can take my hackle pliers, attach it to the stem, the butt, and then as I wrap this, wet fly style, I bring back the barbules, just kind of uh, stroke them back and go one in front of the other as far as the stem. You one wrap in front of the other, going forward towards the eye of the hook. I'm drawing these back, these barbules back, as I wrap this. This is a really full pattern. I mean, you'd never tie a traditional trout soft hackle with this much material. It just wouldn't be right. But with a steelhead fly, big and gaudy apparently is, is, is the rule of the day, at least for this particular pattern. Give it a couple of turns of thread to secure that. Go in with my scissors. I'll cut that stem, get rid of that. Draw those back. Okay, and then begin to form the head of this fly with your thread. I'm using a red flat wax nylon, which is a stout thread. Okay, once I get that head to where I want it, I can take my whip finish tool and then just whip finish one, two, three, four, five, six times. Draw that in like that. Cut my thread. Okay. And then a little trusty head cement of your choice. Of course, I always wait till after I tie all my flies before I put my head cement on. But there you have it. This, we call this the Mickey's Lantern. But boy, does that fly really stand out. And again, you can tie these in a variety of colors. Don't feel that you should be restricted to one color or the other. Experiment. It's a great fly for your steelhead, your salmon. I'll bet it would work with the right hooks. It'd probably work for bass or just about anything that swims. And you can tie it in a range of sizes. I tie it in size one all the way down to about a size eight. But uh, that material that we use, that edge braid or laser wrap, whatever you want to call it, is really an interesting material and uh, should not go unnoticed by the fish or the fishermen. Well, thanks again for being here with myself, Al Dare, at Mickey's Bait and Tackle, tying the Mickey's Lantern.